Okay, well, we'll get started then. Uh, this meeting's been recorded and it'll be posted on YouTube uh, after we're done. Uh, welcome to the, the Singularity CE community call for November. Uh, we have a few things on the agenda today. Um, we'll kick off in a, in a second with um, Adam, who's going to talk about um, the Singularity image format, particularly um, adding support for something called DSSE in it for non-PGP signatures. And then um, there's been some community interest in uh, Singularity CR, CRI and SciCube. So I'll, I'll mention that briefly, and then we'll do the uh, usual sort of development updates and any other business. Uh, so I think we'll kick off straight away and I'll hand over to Adam. Great, thanks Dave. Um, I'm a little under the weather as you can probably tell, so um, I'll do my best to uh, to make it through here, but um, yeah, let me know if, if I'm not coming through clear enough. Um, so uh, maybe to start with, um, I mean, this topic is quite sort of um, down in the weeds of the implementation, so um, I'll try and describe, you know, what it is we're talking about and then show some practical examples um, of how this will affect the code base. Um, but um, starting from the very top, uh, what is DSSE? Um, as you probably saw in the uh, agenda there, stands for uh, Dead Simple Signing Envelope. Um, it's really just a, a standard for, for signing arbitrary data. So um, it's a way of taking you know unsigned data and uh, putting, they call it an envelope around it, um, which has the original signed payload um, and also the signature. And then has some other properties um, that that kind of make it resistant to typical um, either attacks against digital signatures or um, common mistakes that are made in, in implementations involving digital signatures. Um, so um, how we got here, um, you remember for those of you that were on the the, the last call or, or watched on YouTube, um, uh, we've been looking at attestations uh, with the Anchor open source uh, tool SIFT. Um, DSSE is actually uh, uh, the the payload format that are used for um, for attestations. So uh, I won't get too far into that now. But um, if you'd taken you know the example of uh, what we did last week and, and and look at actually what's being dropped out in that payload between SIFT and Gripe, um, that's a DSSE envelope. Um, so um, DSSE itself uh, it, it allows. Um, any any kind of crypto primitive to be used to sign um, attestations, but actually it's, it's quite a bit more general than that. You you can put anything you like inside the envelope, um, and then sign it. Um, so in in addition to attestations, um, you know what else can we put in there? Well, um, certainly you know if we look at what what happens with signing today. Um, it, the the actual payload that's inside of that, and I'll jump into this in a little bit, um, is something we call the metadata block. Um, and suffice to say, that's um, that's exactly you know what we um, what we verify when we're looking for the integrity of the objects within a SIF. Um, kind of has nothing to do with um, with trust or anything like that, though. It's it's simply a listing of um, of checksums of portions of the SIF image that that we're going to verify. Um, so to get into why this matters, um, you know, at a user level, really, this has um, come about. Um, Don, who I think is on the call today, um, has raised a request for uh, X509 support. So um, with what we have in SIF today, uh, we actually can't sign with anything other than PGP. The kind of on-disk format is tied to um, is tied to PGP keys. Uh, and maybe it makes sense for me if I can share my screen here just to, to show you what that looks like to make it a bit more concrete. Um, is everyone able to see? Should be like a VS Code window on the screen. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I, I'm just in the SIFT repository here. Um, there are some um, test images that make up kind of a test corpus and call it um, that are used in the unit tests for SIFT. Um, but so first, I'll, I'll just take a look at, you know, what does it look like for PGP? Um, so I'm going to use SIF tool for this. Um, so, you know, under under the hood, this is kind of what a very basic signed SIF image looks like. You'll see there's 
um, there's a SquashFS file system in here, and then we've got a signature. Um, if we take a look right at that signature directly, we can actually dump it out and see what it looks like. So if I do dump three, four of that same image, um, this under the hood is, is what a, a SIF signature looks like today when you sign with PGP. Um, this first portion here, you'll see, um, this is actually the metadata block I'm talking about. So um, if we take that, um, maybe just to make it a little more readable. Um, you'll see, you know, this is exactly what um, what's in a signature. Um, again, this this portion's totally agnostic of, of what we're using to sign. Um, and we've put it, you know, kind of in this block here that that's very PGP specific. So um, you'll see that, you know, the hash algorithm that was used over this content is there. And then this is actually a, a PGP signature um, that is generated using PGP keys. Um, so um, with with DSSE, you know, really what we're changing here is is not this portion. We're, we're actually going to end up putting the same metadata block inside. Um, but uh, um, we need to solve this outer layer in order to do something like X509 um, or really anything other than PGP. Um, we have to have an envelope format that that's expressive enough to to do that. So um, DSSE again, you know, is is kind of adopted in other parts of the ecosystem, particularly on the cloud native side, um, within the SIG store community, the Intoto project, um, stuff like that. Um, and uh, by adopting it here, um, you know, it it allows us to to really use any kind of key material outside of PGP with that format. Um, so uh, maybe it makes sense next to just compare kind of what that looks like for um, DSSE. Um, I'm actually on the pull request to to add this in right now, which has added some DSSE test images to the corpus. Uh, so if I do that same uh, list here with, uh, let's see if I can remember what it's called. I think it's just DSSE. Um, so see at this level, you know, it looks very similar. We've got the same a root file system and a signature object. Um, the contents of that object is actually different here though. <clears throat> um, so th this is what a DSSE envelope looks like. Um, and I can just actually just cat that whole thing type it into JQ to make it a little um, easier to read. Um, so uh, there's a, a few things that are different about this. Obviously the, the payload format is different. Um, and the payload looks quite um, quite a bit different, um, but the only reason for that is um, this is actually base sixty four encrypted or encoded right now. And that to JQ as well. So um, you'll see here that the, the payload that I've gotten out is actually the exact same uh, what we had for um, for PGP. Um, so what's unique about this, though, um, is, is we have different signatures in here. So um, this is, is probably an atypical case where we've actually applied two signatures to the same payload. Um, and uh, by memory, I think one of these is RSA and one of these is uh, using one of the elliptic curve algorithms. Um, but the, the point is, you know, when you go up a higher level, um, adding X509 support, it, this is expressive enough to um, to, to contain signatures that are generated using X509, um, but also a, a variety of other, um, you know, key material sources. So um, in the cloud world, uh, key management services, um, KMSs are, are common. Um, in the you know DoD space, and you know, UB keys have been used for for key material. There's there's kind of a whole bunch of um, different things that you can do with this. Six Door Project has some really unique ways of um, doing short lived key material. Um, they call it keyless signing. Um, but um, yeah, so um, that's kind of you know way down in the weeds what it looks like. Um, just to to kind of zoom back up before uh, before I open it up uh, back to Dave. Um, put this in perspective, really what we're talking about with this DSSE work um, is adding an on-disk format for digital signatures in SIF um, that allows us to uh, express things other than PGP signatures or, or signatures that are signed with non-PGP key material, I guess is a better way to put that. Um, so, um, you know, this is 
keep saying quite, quite down in the weeds, but I think it's a big enough change that, um, you know, I really wanted to ask for feedback in a very public way um, before we move forward with it. Um, and I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who's responded, um, you know, in Slack and the mailing list, uh, in particular, Dr. Dave D, um, I think is on the call now, um, identified that there's some uh, complementary work or um, a different approach maybe being taken on the obtainer side, um, but it was, you know, worth taking a look at and comparing. And then um, uh, FOTUS, and I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly on the mailing list this morning, adding some um, some color there of the, the differences from its perspective. Um, so yeah, that's um, that, that's really about all I had to say. And uh, But if, if anyone has questions or comments, I'd love to uh, take them. Thanks, uh, Ad. Um, anyone have any anything they would like to ask or anything to mention on, on this? There's, uh, like Adam mentioned, there's a, a discussion going on, on on the mailing list a, a bit. I'll, I'll show you in a in a second if I can find the share screen button. Um, yep. Yeah, so here we are on the uh, Singularity Community Edition mailing list. Uh, this discussion here is uh, where Adam was uh, mentioning that um, it's kind of uh, going to and fro a bit with uh, the, the person who's implementing some of the stuff on the obtainer side. So um, if you're interested, um, take a look there and um, and uh, drop in on, on that thread. Any questions at all? Okay. We will move on then uh, to the next point. Um, just a, a short item, really. Um, some time ago, uh, Scilabs um, did some work uh, on a project called Singularity CRI, an, an associated thing called SciCube. Now, these projects were all about um, using Singularity as the runtime uh, for Kubernetes. And uh, Singularity CRI was uh, kind of the adapter between Singularity and uh, Kubernetes CRI interface, while SciCube was a sort of packaging it all up so that you could try and use it uh, like you could uh, use Minikube. Now, um, we, over a year ago now, um, archived these repositories because um, we'd uh, decided to concentrate on, on Singularity and, and CIF and uh, moving forward on our, on our roadmaps there. Um, and um, the, the SciCube and the Singularity CRI projects had really not had um, the kind of maintenance they need to keep up with new versions of uh, Kubernetes and interfaces and so on. Uh, relatively recently, I was contacted by uh, someone who picked up SciCube and they would forked it and um, they had um, kind of updated it so it works on a, a modern distro and, and so on. Um, and the reason to bring this all up is that um, if you look on the mailing list, and I've also mentioned it in, in Slack, um, they, they basically uh, were asking whether there was any interest in kind of resurrecting these projects. Now for Scilabs, I, um, I'm, I'm pretty um, strong of the opinion that we aren't gonna kind of take on uh, full maintainership and, uh, and sort of these projects. Um, but back when we archived them, we did put out an appeal uh, that if there were community um, developers interested in maintaining them, then we could uh, work to kind of transfer the responsibility for that. Um, so just bringing that up here, if you're interested in the um, fork, which has been adapted, it's, it's this link here. Um, and um, if you follow that through, you'll see that there's a, there's a, a fork with changes and so on. Uh, and this is the developer. So they've been on holiday uh, recently, but they've uh, assured me that they'll chime into this thread soon. Uh, so just making people aware, if you're interested in these uh, types of topics, come along. And again, um, uh, let us know your interest. And if you're um, thinking that you might want to contribute to this project, then uh, it might be possible 
uh, for it to become a, a community maintained uh, project again. Any questions on that one? All right, uh, on to the uh, development stuff. Now, um, I've got a separate point here broken out about Singularity CE's OCI runtime mode. Um, I just wanted to, to call out separately from the other development uh, kind of updates here that um, as we've talked about a lot on our roadmap and in these calls, we're working towards having Singularity be able to run OCI containers, which are in OCI formats uh, on disk with a, a native OCI low level runtime so that Singularity will be able to either use the existing Singularity runtime or a true OCI low-level runtime. And this is the approach we're taking to kind of uh, provide um, much improved OCI compatibility, but with a, a front end, a CLI, which um, exposes the interface and, and the kind of default um, experience that uh, people using Singularity are, are familiar with. Um, so as a, as a little update on where we are on this, you look in the Singularity issues, you'll see that we've got a load of things broken out now into um, uh, tasks. So if I go into any of these, it'll be a specific feature which we're targeting to have supported with this OCI runtime by the 311 milestone. And uh, we've got a, a kind of a uh, master uh, issue here, which uh, says we're going to support running OCI images from a native format um, and we're going to support these flags. So the idea is that these things will work when you Singularity run and give it um, not a, a SIF, but an OCI native format, be that something on disk or um, a, a Docker URI, it'll pull it down and, and then run it. <clears throat> from the OCI format. So you see we're working through the subtasks now, and we're now at the point where um, we have kind of just gotten the, the first bit of this merged so that you can now, um, if you um, have an OCI bundle on your disk, run it um, with um, a Singularity. Now, it's, it's not very interesting yet, but um, just wanted to point out that these things will be now kind of added relatively quickly over the next uh, two or three weeks. Um, so if you're interested in this topic, um, then the, the main branch of the repository will start having things which are, are useful to try out. And uh, you're welcome to ask any questions or give any feedback and so on in, in Slack or on the mailing list and, and so on. Anything on that topic? Any questions there? Okay. Um, otherwise, in development, if I jump along to our, excuse me, if I jump along to our uh, change log, we'll see um, that uh, we have a, a few more things which have popped up down the bottom recently in the, the bug fixes section. Um, Basically, um, over the past couple of weeks, um, I, with uh, some others help in Scilabs, have been uh, spending a long time looking at um, our end test and testing and improving that so it runs faster. That brought us down from being able to do the tests in about 20 minutes to now around eight minutes, uh, which is great. And uh, one of the side effects of this is um, this bug fix, which is mentioned at the bottom here. For um, a couple of years now, there's been a very sort of infrequent issue which occurs in, in only some circumstances involving high load and, and certain distributions or kernels, where if you run a, um, an image using fake root and it's a SIF image, that SIF has to be extracted to disk. And then when uh, you're finished with the container, Singularity has to clean up the image. And um, because of sub ID mappings and things like that, it actually has to um, use its own fake root runtime to do the removal. And now 
uh, what we saw was um, as soon as we would improved the end-to-end -end tests so that they were now extremely uh, parallel and they're working on um, the newest uh, image of Circle CI's Ubuntu 2004, um, a hang when it cleans up the, the image uh, started occurring a lot. And this is, like I say, an issue we've known about for some time, but we've never been able to reproduce it reliably until now. Um, so this one was reproduced and then uh, a, a workaround has been put in to avoid that. Um, so uh, if anyone has had an issue with containers which uh, are run fake root and, and fail to clean up properly, things just hang, that should now be solved. Uh, we've also got another bug fix uh, for uh, image pulls this time. Uh, this primarily affects people who might be pulling images from um, a NetApp uh, system where NetApp um, implements an S3 protocol and you can just pull an image from an HTTPS URL off a NetApp a filer that is exposing its S3 interface. And the trouble with it is that it doesn't uh, provide a content length. Over time, the library we use for our progress bars has changed behavior uh, such that now, um, if you don't give it a size explicitly, it can kind of sit there and, and not think that uh, the file is ever finished downloading, uh, causing a hang. So that's um, what this fix is, it's down there. And the other fix is just a, a sort of minor packaging issue to avoid including the conmon binary which is now built with singularity when we generate our tarballs and things um so really that's what's been kind of going on in in the development um lately um focus on this oci work which involved a lot of preparation and refactoring before we now got into the meat of it um some bug fixes and and lots of work on the end-to-end -end tests and then um, obviously Adam is uh, spearheading uh, this work on CIF uh, to add uh, the DSSE support and, and go down that road. We're expecting um, Singularity CE 3.11 to be a bit late. Um, we did have the milestone down for the middle of this month. I suspect it will be uh, more like uh, the middle of uh, next month before Christmas. Um, but we're not anticipating it slipping uh, too much further than that. So if anyone has any questions about um, what we're doing at present um, or any other business at all, I'll open the floor now and you're, you're welcome to, to ask whatever you want or we can discuss uh, any topics that are interesting. Just want to say that I'm pretty excited about the the faster CI runs. Um, thank you very much for putting in the time there to solve some of those and get everything running more parallel. Um, I think that's super important, and we're already seeing other dividends like finding some of these uh, subtle issues as well that, that are happening. So yeah, thanks. Okay, it's quite a quiet one then this uh, this month. I'm uh, not too sorry to be honest because my voice is starting to go uh, as well as Adam's, but um, we'll post this on YouTube. And if there are any sort of questions that come up about any of these topics, please do reach out in the Slack, in the Google group or, or anywhere else you can find us. And we'll be happy to, to chat about them. Uh, so, uh, thanks for dropping in and uh, hope to see you uh, next month. Thanks. Take care.